De IDF, de Israëlische Defensiemacht, is een van de sterkste door technologie gedreven legers in de wereld. Israël is een klein land en het heeft meer dan 60 jaar van oorlogen gekend. Wat zijn de belangrijkste uitdagingen voor de IDF in de toekomst en is het in staat om voor altijd te blijven leven met het zwaard? The military threats vis-à-vis -vis Israel are nuclear threat from Iran at the top of the list. And then an asymmetrical threat from Hezbollah, Hamas and non-state organizations with a lot of rockets and missiles. And then we cannot neglect the traditional threats of armies. The Syrian army, if Egypt becomes hostile, the Egyptian army. And now there is a combination of asymmetrical threats with traditional symmetrical threat. And at the end of the list, there is a non-kinetic threat. It's the delegitimation campaign against Israel. And sometimes it's all come together. There is a group of defense and security establishments in this country who have the ultimate responsibility to see to it that whatever happens, the uh, existence of Israel is never in doubt. And this can include a lot of things, many, many things, uh, most of which I cannot uh, discuss, but many, many things which are dis destined to make sure that we who live in this very, very unusual and very, very hostile neighborhood will be able to live in peace and tranquility and conduct a normal life without having to get up every morning and ask ourselves, are we going to see the evening following? This is a very unique system. We're talking about uh, one of the only types of uh, systems of its kind in the entire world. This whole field of active air defense is a relatively new field. It, uh, it's only been in most recent decades that we've seen all the developments and all of the advancements. As you recall, during the, Persian, the first Persian Gulf War, we saw patriots uh, being used to defend the skies and the homes of Israel. Uh, and again, this is just another technological innovation uh, within that field. Right now, we are actually at an operational phase. Iron Dome has been used in the south, defending the cities of Beersheba, Ashkelon, and Ashdod from rocket attacks that come out from Gaza. It has been extremely successful, and the more we have, the merrier. This is what gets fired out of a can and flies out to greet the incoming threat. And what this does is it's given a place to fly to by the um, Battle Management Center. It flies to that location. It zeroes in on the target, and when it gets as close as it can to the target, the explosive charge explodes, 
and that causes the warhead of the rocket, it causes that to explode. So not only have we shot down the threat, but we've neutralized the threat by killing its warhead, by exploding its warhead. And anything that falls off of the threat afterwards, any kind of debris, that's not gonna cause anybody any hazards. It's a standard looking missile, but while it looks vanilla and while it looks generic, it is an extremely smart missile. When this is flying almost a thousand meters a second, this is flying that fast, the guy coming in is flying that fast, and all of this takes place in the blink of an eye. You have to remember that active air defense is not a 100% guarantee. Uh, there are other factors that go into defense against rockets that probably the most important one is passive defense. The Israeli citizens listening to the home front command, the education that we provide them, the bomb shelters, the gas masks, all of that is a part of what we know as passive defense. This school was rebuilt four years ago uh, to protect the children from the attacks from the Hamas. The children here are not normal children. They are not. They are children that didn't have the chance to have a normal childhood. Sp they spend a whole days, whole days in locked in the classroom because the military gave an instruction to stay in the classroom for the, for the whole day. Seven, eight hours a day locked in a classroom because it was times when there were 60, 70 rockets for a day. Like in, an, in a half an hour, we had four, five, six and seven sirens in half an hour. As we are now, uh, I think the second most active country in the world after the United States in developing active defense systems. That means anti-missile missiles. That's, uh, we have four systems in development now, and two of them already in service, the AO2, which I had uh, the honor of leading for uh, almost now, more than nine years, uh, actually from inception to uh, first deliveries. Uh, that's the AO2. Uh, we are now devel developing uh, a more advanced version called the AO3, which is more capable, and that's on the upper side against a very long-range missile. system. So we have a lower layer, which is um, Iron Dome, which defends from lower, shorter range rockets. David Sling, which has a larger footprint and it can defend against rockets that come from further away. And Arrow, which defends, Arrow 2 and 3 actually, which defend against the uh, missiles that are coming in from further away. Ook in het tijdperk van dronen, high-tech en computer heeft men nog altijd gevechtstroepen nodig. Zoals de Tweede Libanon-oorlog van 2006 heeft bewezen, zonder dat soort troepen gevechtstroepen dus, komt men tegen terroristen en tegen guerrilla's niet klaar. And 
the basic training, what we do is make them, they become soldiers, from citizens to soldiers. And after that, in the more, in the more advanced training, what they do is become combat soldiers. They become soldiers who can fight together and learn how to cooperate and what to do in the situation of uh, somebody who wants to hurt them or in the situation of war.